The Freedom Dividend, Universal Basic Income, or UBI. The old but somehow still futuristic idea to just make sure people have enough money that the streets of LA don't look like this. That's a future enactment of what happens when the government's in charge of creating all the jobs. That's Bernie Sanders' proposed Federal Jobs Guarantee, or FJG, to keep power in the hands of the government. UBI, unlike FJG, puts power in the people's hands to create the jobs of the future that are more meaningful to them. UBI seems very futuristic, probably because it's never been done before except in experiments. Finland gave 2,000 people a basic income for two years, but two years isn't long enough. People make very different decisions about things that are temporary versus permanent. I mean, you don't bring your Tinder date to Thanksgiving dinner. This is part two of my series on automation, UBI, and Andrew Yang. Click somewhere up here to watch part one. In it, I talk about how automation will decimate 30% of jobs in the next couple of decades and Andrew Yang's plan to help Americans turn lemons to lemonade until they make a robot for that too. So today I'm gonna to focus on how the Freedom Dividend would be paid for and why it's a thousand percent better than socialism at getting us to that Star Trek type future we want. And I take it to the streets of Hollywood to see who wants a free thousand bucks a month. Spoiler, everyone wants it. And they're gonna need it because we're in the knee of the curve. Welcome to Knee the Curve. Don't get left in the past. Hit subscribe to stay up to date on the cyborgification of the economy. If I make you laugh or you learn a little something or both and you feel like supporting the show, I put together some merch on Teespring and you can check out the description for links to Patreon, PayPal, crypto, or just share this with someone you think will like it. Let's get into it. Automation. It's the reason people can afford Teslas. It's the reason you're spending a lot less time in line at Target and more time buying underwear in your underwear. And I suspect it's the reason my girlfriend took so long in the bathroom last night. Who lights candles to brush their teeth? Anyway, there's a lot more at stake here than just my manhood. Andrew Yang thinks capitalism itself could be the victim. I like to quote my friend Eric Weinstein who said we never knew that capitalism was going to get eaten by its son, technology. It's true. Technology thrives on capitalism. And yeah, capitalism alone might make us kind of unhealthy. But pure socialism would be like putting Cookie Monster on an all-kale diet. He'd waste away to nothing and eventually probably start murdering journalists. If only there was someone sensible who could explain that if we mixed in a salad here and there, we could have our cookie and eat it too. The fundamentals that we assume to be true about capitalism are now breaking down and technology is the accelerant. Socialism. I get it. If you come of age in this era socialism, and you just see this socialism, inhuman version of capitalism, you would think, give me anything that's the opposite of this. Socialism. The vision that if we just scrape profits back from Wall Street, all will be well socialism. does not take into account the socialism. economic transformation that we're in the midst of. I'm a CEO and business person. I love capitalism. This is capitalism where income doesn't start at zero. Uh, and having money is actually good for business, good for the consumer economy, good for markets. Huh. Kermit sounds eerily similar to Andrew Yang. Now someone just needs to tell SNL's new cast member, Bowen Yang, because so far he's been doing an impression of a white person doing an impression of an Asian person. He's squinting. I'm literally giving free money to people and I'm still in sixth place. I don't know if it is, but it feels racist, which I would like to joke about being offended by, but won't because the internet. But let's get into it. Andrew, how much is this thing gonna cost? Headline costs about $3 trillion a year. And where does he think all this money's gonna come from? Well, you guys are not gonna believe this. Mexico's gonna pay for it. They're gonna pay for our UBI. Yeah, Andrew Yang figured it out. That's how you make a deal. Kidding. But if he would just say that, he'd be elected yesterday. Also, how much will this cost is not even the right question. The right question is how much will this save us? You have to know that before you can know how much it costs. Well, the first thing is it's not actually $3 trillion. We're spending about $1.5 trillion right now on 126 welfare programs and Social Security. If you're already getting 
more than $1,000 in stuff. We're not just going to stack it on top. We're just going to say you're guaranteed 1000 And if you're already getting more, then this doesn't touch you. You can keep your current stuff. So the $3 trillion actually shrinks a lot very fast because of the fact that about half of Americans are already getting various income support from the government. So the real price tag is closer to about $1.8 trillion. I'm no politician, but say that more. Everything you see in the mainstream media about Freedom Dividend is like, it's $3 trillion and Amazon's gonna pay for it. As Andrew likes to say, Tech check. Tech check. Tech check. Tech check is catchy. I like it. But it makes it seem like the idea is to saddle big tech companies with a $3 trillion Sunday, when it's really just the cherry on top. A better analogy might be, if you wanna buy a $3 trillion house and you're living in a $1.2 trillion mobile home, you don't need an extra three trillion. You can sell your mobile home and just live in the house. We're not keeping both. Then you can start saving all the money you were spending on oil changes, air filters, brake pads, tires, gas, parking permits, and accident repairs. And your lifestyle just improved dramatically. You've got 10 times the square footage, a pool, a pool house, plumbing, central AC, an amazing view, and a bunch of robot servants to keep the place nice. That's a lot of value. You're saving money on a bunch of things we spend like a, about a trillion dollars on right now, like healthcare, incarceration, homelessness services. It's a great incentive to try and stay out of jail because you know you stop getting it if, if you wind up in jail. When you come out of jail, at least you have you know a thousand bucks a month waiting for you, and then you're less inclined to to commit a crime and head back in. Everything we're talking about is at the margins. I mean, everything's like this statistical curve and you're taking the people who are, let's call it like the last 10 to 20%. Mm -hmm. But if you reduce our incarcerated population by 10 to 20%, I mean, that's billions and billions of dollars. That's right, more savings. Just because people on the margins are less desperate, less stressed and less likely to act all. <laughs> Plus, Nobody ever talks about administrative costs, which add up to tens of billions. As it is, we're spending a lot of money figuring out how to only give a few people some money. When we stop spending money to hand out the money, we have more money. Although it is ironic that UBI will essentially automate away a lot of government jobs, but you know, at least they'll have UBI. Plus, if you think people are finding meaning in their government job, then you've never been to the DMV. This isn't a presidential release of prisoner form. Those are blue. Okay, but what happens with all the money we give out? Does it just go away? When you put money into people's hands, the money doesn't disappear. It's going to go right back into the economy. They're going to spend it on food, child care, car repairs they've been putting off, the occasional night out. And then all of those businesses end up hiring more people, and then we end up getting some of the money back as tax revenues. If you look at the cost savings and the value gains and the economic growth, that actually gets you back about a trillion dollars. So a cool trill in cost savings and the value gain from living in a nicer place, add that to the 1.2 trill we get back from selling the mobile home, I mean, our current social welfare programs, and we have 2.2 trillion. We could pay off two thirds of the house up front. That feels very responsible. So we gotta finance 800 billion. Now let's talk tech check. And the way you get the last 800 billion or so is related to what we think is happening with AI and all these advanced technologies. The wealth tax makes a lot of sense in principle. The problem is that it's been tried in Germany, France, Denmark, Sweden, and all those countries ended up repealing it because it had massive implementation problems and did not generate the revenue that they'd projected. If we can't learn from the failed experiences of other countries, what can we learn from? We should not be looking to other countries' uh, mistakes. Instead, we should look at what Germany, France, Denmark, and Sweden still have, which is a value-added tax. If we give the American people a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every robot truck mile, every Facebook ad, we can generate hundreds of billions of dollars and then put it into our hands because we know best how to use it. This guy's talking sense. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders can't stop talking about democratic socialism. No matter how democratic it is, socialism doesn't get you Star Trek. Capitalism gets you Star Trek. Socialism gets you slow economic growth, less entrepreneurial opportunity, and lack of motivation due to lesser rewards. Capitalism gets you Iron Man. Socialism gets you Iron Age. I know, Trekkies are freaking out right now because in Star Trek they're so socialist they don't even have money which is the biggest problem with Star Trek. A lot has changed in the past 300 years. People are no longer obsessed with the 
accumulation of things. We have eliminated hunger, want, the need for possessions. Okay, then just give me all your shit, Picard. What's the big deal? Look, I get eliminating hunger and need, but you got rid of want? Want? How do you figure out who gets the only available high-rise apartment with a south-facing city view? Nobody wants it? Right. Resources will always be limited, and money is literally the technology we use to make dividing up resources really easy. Everything can't be everyone's all the time. Not until we become a glowing orb of superintelligence inhabiting the entire universe like Ray Kurzweil predicts will happen after the technological singularity. Click up here to see my video on the technological singularity and figure out why. The point is, if we want to drive technological growth to create a Star Trek type future, we need capitalism. My worry with Bernie is this. Democratic socialism. Because according to Wikipedia's definition, democratic socialists will not stop until capitalism is gone. UBI, on the other hand, is not socialism. As you suggested, I'm a capitalist. I'm mm -hmm. a fan. I challenge you to find a clip of Bernie saying that. I also disagree with the idea that people need to be burdened to find happiness. Well, there is the possibility of providing um, a minimum income. I don't think that people can be happy unless they are burdened down with something, like a sled dog is burdened down with something. If Jordan's thesis were true, then why would there be any extremely wealthy people? As soon as someone made enough for basic needs, they would just stop working hard and fall apart. But that's not how we operate. People will always find a way to be burdened. You think Bill Gates doesn't feel burdened by solving his foundation's grand challenges like eradicating malaria? It's in our nature to challenge and burden ourselves. But having money lets you think bigger than the challenges of staying alive. We need challenges, yes, but what better challenge than the one automation presents us with? The challenge to figure out for ourselves how to spend our time in ways that are truly meaningful. And with that in mind, I asked some Hollywood randos what they would do with an extra thousand bucks. Here's how that went. What would you do if we, if you just had a thousand dollars right now? Let's see, I'll go buy some clothes. Probably another holiday. I'd probably go into one of these souvenir stores and just buy whatever I want. I'd get a head start on the rent. Debt. <laughs> rent and debt, that's what I would pay. Another holiday? Another holiday, yes. <laughs> wow, are you doing a lot of holidays? You, got, you only live once, don't you? What if you got a thousand dollars a month for 12 months? What do you think you'd do? I have my own projects I would like to fund. Scripts. Scripts, yep. This is Hollywood. I'd probably try to save up and maybe buy a car. I'd go and find a rich movie star and uh, yeah, just, just have fun. <laughs> is that how much they cost? A thousand dollars a month? What if you got a thousand dollars a month for uh, the rest of your life? Probably I'd, I'd donate to the Children's Hospice every single month. Wow, that's, that's very nice. I would for sure move in the direction of what suits my spirit more than my bottom line. Honestly, probably the first few months I would end up spending it. And then I would realize that like, there's no point in spending little bits at a time when I could buy something much bigger over the course of a few months. You'd, you'd settle down over time and uh, get responsible. I would hope so. I would like to think that I would be less stressed. I'd probably blow some, if I'm being honest, on technology and trips and stuff like that. But eventually I would, I would invest it in order to retire and to be able to buy a house one day. Do you think a robot could take over your job? I think every job eventually is going to be taken over by this type of stuff. People will be losing their jobs because of this, because robots are crazy. Now they can try, but there's never going to be another me. Have you heard of uh, universal basic income? That sounds good. Sounds good on paper uh, right now. Down the line, I'm not exactly sure what the, the ramifications and the implications it would have on inflation and what people charge for things. I would like to see it tried and see what happens. Incredibly stupid. Really? Yeah, because there is only the like, 30% of the population that would know how to use that in the right way. What do you think other people would do with the money? You can't aspire to be anything better than that if you're literally just given that. Do you think people would stop working if they got that? Probably would. Do you think you'd quit if you uh, if you got $1,000 a month? I sort of like the work. You, uh, you said that if you had that money, you would do some really nice things with it. So you think maybe other people would quit their job, but you, personally, you would not quit your job. I wouldn't. So you think you would be responsible with it, but the vast majority of people would, uh, would do bad things with it? Yeah. I'll let this guy pass, because this is important. Your robot can get his job, though. Get him out of here. That's the first job that's going to go. You don't think a robot can take your job? Okay. 
Robot's practically already taken that job. He's half robot. You put that speaker on a Segway, job taken. That's the show. Thanks for watching. If you're in the Yang Gang, make sure you share this video with your people. Huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. If you like technology news and you want to see more like this, hit subscribe and think about joining these amazing people as a patron. Let me know in the comments what you think about automation and UBI versus FJG. If you'd like to write jokes or help research for this series, hit me up on Twitter, at Knee of the Curve, or join my Discord server, link in description. Or just click one of these other videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Peace.